There is a prayer movement that is going on in the country of England that is creating the most extraordinary missionaries. One group of missionaries takes literally what Jesus just said to his disciples. And they pray and they say, okay, Lord, where do you want to go? us to go. It began initially by them getting in a car and driving over two to three villages away. Now they get on airplanes and they literally go to you fill in the blank town. Okay, Lord, you want us to go to Johannesburg. Okay, Lord, you want us to go to Nairobi. Okay, Lord, you want us to go to Singapore and other places. They take nothing with them. They get off the plane and they say, okay, Lord, who should we meet now? And they meet someone. They're there on average for about two weeks. And they come back with the most remarkable stories of God's provisions and of amazing conversions. I use that as a preface because our efforts more often than not want to domesticate the words that Jesus said to his disciples in a way that keeps us in a place of self-imposed protection. I say self-imposed because more often than not, when the Spirit of God actually gets hold of someone, what begins to happen to that person, if it's really the work of the Holy Spirit, rather than just an a time when I feel better than I normally do because somebody prayed for me, is that there is that kind of missionary impulse, the willingness to step out and to be a little bit more adventurous than they have been in the past. Now, of course, the thing about this particular commissioning story is, is that it's very specific. Do not go to the Samaritans. Go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And here are your marching orders. But if you take all of those missionary sending stories that go through all of the Gospels, but especially Matthew, Mark, and Luke, there are things that they have in common that are worthy for our own consideration. First is the willingness to go where Jesus tells you, which assumes a lot. It assumes that I have the kind of relationship with Christ where I know that I can trust Him. Because more often than not, a hesitancy to step out in faith has more to do with my lack of understanding about the nature of God than it does about my own lack of courage. You see, if I understand that God is, to use the lovely line out of Hosea this morning, the one who wants to come and pick us up and hold us to his cheeks, like an infant, I mean, it's an extraordinarily remarkable uh, phrase, then that means that I can trust him. It means that there is in him no condemnation, that he can, in fact, and will provide for all of my needs according to his riches in glory. In other words, if I have that kind of solidity within me, because I know, I know, like deep in here, that that's who God is, that gives me more fuel to step out and, as it were, to use a secular line, take chances, a line that's never in the New Testament. <laughs> uh, the, the line in the New Testament would be to be obedient to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and to do things that I wouldn't normally do for the sake of the fact that not only do I know that that's who God is, but also because I see myself just by virtue of baptism and confirmation is a missionary. That sort of my core identity is not a Christian who is learning to live his or her own life, but rather as my core identity is that I am a Christian whom God, by virtue of being made a Christian, has sent on mission. That's the assumption of literally the entire New Testament. And that wherever I am, I'm called upon to listen, obey, and step out. And if there's anything inside of me that is hesitant and fearful, then either it's because I don't understand God very well, 
or there's a part of me that needs a deeper sense of trust. God, work it in me that I might be more of who you're asking of me as the one whom you've made a child of God and an inheritor of the kingdom of heaven. Because all of the rest of that, the trust for God's supernatural provision, even for food, clothing, and shelter, the willing to step out boldly in prayer and to expect God to do extraordinary things, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. All of that flows out of that kind of confidence that comes from, I know who he is, and I know who he's made me. And because both of those are true, I can begin to step out. And if I don't, it has something to do with the fact that I still don't know who he is, who he really is. I might have a picture in my brain, but that, might, that may not correspond with who we see in Jesus in the New Testament. Or how I understand who I am as someone who belongs to him. And so the call today is don't write off these missionary sendings as something that was particular to Jesus' first disciples. They're too consistent. They say something to the church as a whole that we are also called to hear that challenges us and invites us in to be a part of this, what can only be called, this remarkable movement where the people of God step out and God uses them in extraordinary ways. And out of that, something happens that's nothing less than what can be described as the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen.